This is where me and the zombies meet. Congratulations, fight fam. It has been announced that Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua have reached an agreement to fight one another for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world in the year 2021. But here at the Boxing Bros, we're not surprised. Truthfully, we said that they were in negotiations before this news broke. You can check. And a lot of people told us we didn't know what we were talking about again. But this isn't about that. This is about the fact that it's not really breaking news to us. Why well, I should say to three of the four of us, we expected this. We believe Tyson Fury is a man of high character who chases challenges. And we believe the same about Anthony Joshua. Everything about their makeup, everything in their history suggests that these two men would fiend to fight one another. Anthony Joshua, who's beaten Dillian White, Vladimir Klitschko, Joseph Parker, Alexander Povetkin, and who lost to Andy Ruiz and then regained his title in immediate rematch. Anthony Joshua, a man who's one of four heavyweight champions to regain their title in an immediate rematch. Of course, he would be chomping at the bit to get at Tyson Fury. And Tyson Fury, a man who beat Vladimir Klitschko in Germany, a man who overcame depression, who overcame drug abuse, who overcame alcohol abuse, who overcame obesity, a man who was inactive for two and a half years, had two tune-up fights, and fought Deontay Wilder for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World in just six months. The man who was knocked on his behind by the so-called hardest puncher in boxing history in the 12th round of their fight, who got up and then ended up winning the rest of that round, and then in the rematch told the world, I am not going to run from him, I'm going to walk straight to him, and I'm going to knock him out. When everyone laughed and called him Pillow Fist, said he couldn't knock out anyone, Deontay Wilder himself called Tyson Fury Pillow Fist. And said, if Tyson Fury knocks me out, I will retire. It's time for me to retire. Yes, and what did Tyson Fury do? Everything he said he'd do. That man, of course he would want to fight Anthony Joshua. So the fact that they announced reaching a deal is no surprise to three of the four of us. That is not what this video is about. This video is about statements made by a man whom I respect greatly as a man and as a former fighter and I believe the door hasn't closed for this man to come back as a fighter. I think the right opportunity will bring this guy back and I hold him in high regard but I strongly disagree with statements that he made and the man I'm talking about is Andre Ward and these are the statements. Well, I, I've been one of the ones that was that have been clamoring for an undisputed champion, but I just don't like the path necessarily that Tyson Fury is taking. I'm not a fan of giving an opponent, and that opponent right now is Deontay Wilder, bulletin board material. This is a man in Deontay Wilder who took his first loss, a humiliating loss at that. He's dealing with his own pride being bruised. He's a competitor, and if you're Team Fury, you have to know and you have to leave room for Deontay Wilder showing up in the rematch as the best version of himself. I don't like the attitude motivation because even if Fury is not overlooking him that's the way Team Wilder is going to interpret this. Andre Ward who cares how they interpret it? I mean respectfully Andre Ward you didn't care how Sergey Kovalev interpreted you saying he wasn't that tough and that he was a bully and you were going to break down the bully and you weren't intimidated by him and when you stand up to a bully a bully's going to fold in fact everything that you said came to fruition Andre Ward. When you called out Kovala being a bully and you said you were going to stand up to him and then you knocked him out with the body shot, everything you said came true. So how is it you don't like Tyson Fury giving Deontay Wilder bulletin board material, but you gave Sergey Kovalev bulletin board material? And I bring up that fight for a reason. Fury versus Wilder, both fights, the first fight in the rematch, remind me of Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. The first fight in the rematch. And I even brought that up in the predictions. I said, I believe uh, Wilder Fury 2 is going to be just like uh, Kovalev Ward 2. So, Ward was hurt in the first fight. Got dropped. Had to show tremendous grit. I still remember Verge. Leonard got up. You got up. Giving him the motivation. And Ward dug deep and he won the fight. There was some controversy there. I know some people felt like Ward didn't win. Personally, I felt like Ward won. 
especially when you look at the way he climbed back into the fight, the way he took control of the fight, and, and you drop someone like that, and then they fight back the way that Ward did, they start to win over the crowd. They start to win over the judges. Everyone remembers you had this person half dead, and you couldn't finish him. And then, in the rematch, Andre Ward stopped him with a body shot. But during the buildup and leading up to the fight, Andre Ward showed Kovalev no respect. He called him a bully, said he was going to bully the bully, said when you stand up to the bully, the bully will fold, and that's exactly the way it happened. Look at the picture that Tyson Fury posted on Instagram saying that uh, Muhammad Ali's great. He said this pick in honor of the great at Muhammad Ali, pick taken over 50 years apart. Greatness comes from within. Hashtag iconic, hashtag greatest. Ali standing over Liston, Tyson Fury standing over Deontay Wilder. Everything that Tyson Fury does says that he is extremely confident he is going to smash Deontay Wilder in the trilogy. What's wrong with that? Everything he does. He's, he's standing over him the way Ali was standing over Liston. He's announcing the fight for Undisputed before they even have a trilogy. The same way he announced he was going to come to him in the, in, in the uh, second fight, in the rematch, and knock him out. You don't think that was bulletin board material? It was, so, it was bulletin board material because Deontay Wilder said, if he knocks me out, I'll retire. Deontay Wilder said he has pillow fists. How about Deontay Wilder giving Tyson Fury bulletin board material? How about all this garbage coming out? Oh, the gloves were loaded. Oh, it was a 40-pound suit. Oh, Tyson Fury had some uh, metal object in his glove. Oh, they gave Deontay Wilder bad water. You don't think that's bulletin board material for Tyson Fury? You don't think Tyson Fury wants to take this man's head off once and for all? To end all this nonsense that's going on out there? What about bulletin board material for Fury? But how about this? I'm taking it somewhere else. And I love Andre Ward, so let's get, let's get this clear. That's my guy, rooted for him, supported him throughout his whole career. I just don't agree with the statement. Because one, I think it's a bit hypocritical because I saw him do it to Sergey Kovalev, among other fighters, do things and say things that could be considered bulletin board material. But also, I feel like confidence is confidence. Tyson Fury has been in the ring with this guy for two fights now and has won the majority of the rounds. In fact, the only time Wilder's won rounds is when he knocked him down. And I, and I think I would give him the second round of the rematch because he landed the so-called hardest punch in boxing history, but he still couldn't knock Fury out. And I think in Fury's heart, he's, he believes this guy can't beat me. And you, and you can't get mad at that. Okay, so there's that. But the main reason why this is genius, the main reason why this is genius, you guys have to see it. I'm going to break it down for you is it puts all the pressure on Deontay Wilder. By announcing this fight, by announcing that Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury are going to fight for Undisputed in 2021, it tells Wilder, either you win this fight or everything you've done up to this point has been for naught. Has been for naught. On April 10th, 2018, Ring Magazine wrote an article about a contract offer Eddie Hearn had sent to Deontay Wilder's management team. In the article, Ring Magazine wrote, the first punch in the proposed heavyweight unification bout between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua was thrown, predictably enough, by one of the promoters. And no one is quite sure when the next one will be thrown, or even if it will be delivered by one of the fighters. On Monday night, Eddie Hearn, Joshua's promoter, made an offer to Al Heyman, advisor to Wilder, for a fight at an unspecified site at a date yet to be determined. The only definitive piece of information in Hearn's offer was the amount of money he is willing to offer Wilder, $12.5 million. And with the offer comes a caveat, take it or leave it. If they don't want it, we'll fight our mandatory, Hearn told Ring by telephone on Tuesday morning. But he added this somewhat encouraging caveat. If they don't accept it, the fight is not dead. It just means we're going to fight Alexander Povekin next 
and we'll talk again in December or February or March of next year. That's what the article says. But there's a key point to understand here in this article. It says Eddie Hearn made the offer to Al Heyman. Eddie Hearn, who was Joshua's promoter, made the offer to Al Heyman, who was Deontay Wilder's advisor or promoter or whatever you want to call it, right? We've, we've already gone into this, but you have two bosses speaking among each other in this offer. And it's dated when this article was written on April 10th, 2018. Out of nowhere, on April 25th, 2018, Deontay Wilder makes a post on Twitter in which he says, at Anthony Joshua, mate, I sent this personally this time just so there's no miscommunication. Tell at Eddie Hearn to let you personally check his email this time. BTW, by the way, I sent your manager, Rob McCracken, the email as well. I'm looking forward to our meeting in the ring. Hashtag King vs. King. Now, there's so much to dissecting this. It's hilarious. For one, Deontay Wilder doesn't write like this. If you look at posts that Deontay Wilder's made, you will see so many grammatical errors. But when you break down this tweet, you look at mate capitalized with the exclamation point. You look at personally this time just so there's, there's the apostrophe S, which is correct as well. No miscommunication. Tell at Eddie Hearn, right, uh, to let you personally check his email this time. By the way, I sent your manager, Rob McCracken, and he writes it perfectly correct. I'm looking forward to our meeting in the ring. Hashtag King vs. King. Now, I'm not saying he's a dummy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, when you're writing these types of emails or this type of tweet, and you compare it to the type of tweets that he normally writes, it's not like this. And also, he's writing this, and he's saying that he sent an offer, but it's known already that Eddie Hearn sent an offer. So, let's hear the details of this offer. Well, I'm about to catch this plane in a few minutes, but Anthony, you know, with your man Eddie and Barry Hearn, and tell them to check their email. I got something special for you. By the way, all the money's in the bag. So I expect you'll be a man of your word. Okay. I'll take 50 million up front. If that's the case, Wilder's team, bring me 50 million up front and we'll take the fight. I'll see you soon then. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? You see, he's saying your 50 million dollars or what you asked for is in the bag. What you ask for is in the bag. He doesn't break down anything else. Which is weird because why would you send someone a contract for $50 million when they just offered you twelve point five? Shouldn't you send a counter offer to try to get more money for yourself? Instead, you're going to try to give this person $50 million? There's not something sketchy about that? You think they're just going to send you a counter offer for $50 million? The counter offer has nothing to do with how much Deontay Wilder is going to make. Instead, the counter offer is to offer him $50 million. So naturally, you're going to want to know, okay, $50 million for what, right? But that's not even the kicker. Here's the kicker. Why is Deontay Wilder sending the offer? See, Eddie Hearn sent the offer to Al Heyman. That's the way the business goes. And you have to question, does Deontay Wilder even have the authority to agree to fights without the consent of, say, Al Heyman, his advisor or his promoter? Because fighters can't just agree to fight who they want to fight. They fight who their promoters tell them to fight. So the other thing that people don't understand is, was this contract even binding? Does Deontay Wilder have the authority to create a binding contract like the one he e the one he emailed to Eddie Hearn 
or the one he emailed to Rob McCracken, according to his tweet. It's something you really have to think about. So if Deontay Wilder doesn't have the authority to enter into a contract, well, who does? Ludabella, Al Heyman. So if this contract was genuinely intended to be binding, how come Ludabella didn't send it? How come Al Heyman didn't send it? Remember, what we know from the tweet is that Deontay Wilder admits that he sent it personally. If you look at the way the tweet was written, I'm telling you, someone wrote it for him. They told him what to say. They told him what to do. And my personal belief is the reason why Wilder sent it was because in the event that Joshua did accept it, maybe they would say it's not binding. Deontay Wilder doesn't have the authority to uh, negotiate fight contracts for himself. He doesn't have the authority to enter in fights for himself. He fights for PBC. He fights for Luda Bella. He, he, he has a contract that says he fights who we tell him. So that's one way they could have weaseled out of the deal. If they, if, they, if they didn't want to go through with the fight. But there's another reason. And I'll get into that in a second. But how come Luda Bella and Al Heyman didn't send it is a key point. So let's take a look at an article from the LA Times in which Lance Pugmire said, Wilder's promoter Luda Bella said the team emailed an offer of at least $50 million to Joshua on Wednesday. It stipulated the potential fight would take place stateside and happen between September and December. Pugmire noted Wilder already received a $12.5 million offer to fight Joshua in the United Kingdom. The report provided additional details for the offer, noting Joshua would receive 50% of the total if the revenue goes over $100 million. So understand that. The way that's written is he will receive 50% if the revenue goes over $100 million, but what if it doesn't? And also, why would Anthony Joshua give Deontay Wilder 50% of the fight? Why? I got an email um, from Deontay Wilder, actually, not from Shirley or Al or anyone like that, from uh, Deontay. Um, just basically saying that it was, it was addressed to me, Anthony and Rob McGregor, and it just said, um, Dear Anthony... You said in an interview that if I gave you 50 million, you'd sign for the fight tomorrow. Um, I'm going to give you a 50-50 split of the fight, which obviously isn't of interest, but with a 50 million guarantee, which is of interest, um, please accept this fight by tomorrow, which kind of makes me feel like it's a PR move more than anything, especially as it's come from Deontay Wilder. But we have to take it seriously. And, you know, if there's... 50, they want total control of the show and at a date and venue of their choice again not necessarily a deal breaker but if this is serious we really need to look at it proof of funds a proper contract to see the terms and what they require from us obviously um, and then go from there Deontay Wilder well, no, no 50 million dollars it's a lot of money we're definitely interested in that but obviously the devil's in the detail I go back to Deontay Wilder well, I tell you word for word, something like, dear Deontay, on email. Um, yeah, on email. Dear Deontay, we're very interested in this fight. It's the one we want next. Right. Very interested in your offer. Obviously, there's lots to discuss. Please send us a draft contract. We'll come back to you as soon as possible. He replies, we're not going to send you a contract until you agree to the deal. Have you ever heard so much bullshit in your life? Then, Shirley Winkle, who I'm supposed to see on Thursday, cancels the meeting on Thursday and says, we'll meet on Friday. So I'll send an email, let's meet at 10.30 on Friday. He then sends an email to the press, not to me, to the press first, then to me, to say it would be non-productive to have a meeting until you agree the deal. Now, if you're out there and you're watching this video, and I know you won't necessarily understand the boxing business, but please just listen to what I've just said. I want contracts. I want a meeting. Is that a lot to ask in a $50 million offer? What do you expect me to do? Yeah, that's fine. We take that. 
Well, just show me a piece of paper, we'll sign it. They're bluffing, and we smoked them out. So up to this point, here's what we know. Eddie Hearn sent Al Heyman an actual contract, and Deontay Wilder sent an email. Do you understand the difference? Eddie Hearn actually has the authority to enter into a contract for Anthony Joshua. Deontay Wilder doesn't have the authority to enter into a fight for himself. It's highly unlikely, which is the reason why he needs permission from Al. If fighters could just enter into contracts randomly, then there'll be no honor amongst thieves. Anytime a fighter wants to fight someone, they would just sign a contract and it would be binding. No, that's why promoters say, you do what I tell you. You fight who I tell you. They're the only ones with the authority. The person with the authority to sign a contract for Anthony Joshua, the person with the authority to enter into a binding contract for Anthony Joshua sent a contract to the person who has the authority to enter into a binding contract with Deontay Wilder. And Deontay Wilder, and Deontay Wilder sent an email to Eddie Hearn. When Eddie Hearn wanted to sit down and negotiate a contract, Shelly Finkel said there's no point unless you're going to agree to the terms in the email. Well, does that sound like people who are trying to negotiate a big time fight? You decide. What's your reaction to Deontay Wilder's $50 million offer to Joshua to fight him? Everything that glitters is not gold. Although often the story has been told, just stay cool, keep your feet on the ground, keep your head sound, and believe in the Lord. Test that and test your faith and go with it, you know what I mean? You know, all the sparkle and the glitter, you know what I mean? Look around hither, because you can't find it when you go to get it. You know what I mean? What are the conditions of this $50 million offer? Yes, you know what I mean? So just stay cool, uh, Wilder. Everything going to be all right. And I'm going to come over and help Al Heyman and, and help you out so we can really give you what you just deserve. The, the whole focus of the world. And Joshua, another good man. You know what I mean? Anthony, we're going to take care of business. But you know, they don't they do They don't know how to promote. They're not promoting them. You know what I mean? All these numbers and things in the sky, that's pie in the sky when you die. We want something sound on the ground while we're around. Don King was 100% right about the pie in the sky. Do you believe Deontay Wilder could offer Anthony Joshua $50 million? In his fight with Burmain Stavern, the rematch, Deontay Wilder earned $1.4 million. That was his purse for the fight. $1.4 million. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua earned $13 million to fight Carlos Tuckum. And Carlos Tuckum made $1 million. Basically, Anthony Joshua's opponent was getting paid Deontay Wilder money. Deontay Wilder fought Luis Ortiz and almost lost that fight. And he made $2.1 million. When Anthony Joshua fought Joseph Parker, he made over 20 million pound. And Joseph Parker made over 13 million pound. So here you have a situation where Anthony Joshua makes significantly more than Deontay Wilder. But not only does Anthony Joshua make significantly more than Deontay Wilder, his opponents do as well. So why would he give Deontay Wilder 50-50? Everyone who fights Anthony Joshua makes more money than they make fighting anyone else. From Carlos Tecum to Joseph Parker to Alexander Povetkin. So what makes Deontay Wilder think he's so special? You're not the special one. Joshua is. Everyone who fights Joshua makes more than they're worth. And once they're done fighting Joshua, they go back to making what they generally generate. So why would Anthony Joshua agree to 50-50? And where's this money coming from? Like Don King said, pie in the sky. Why'd you ask for the $50 million and then turn it down from Deontay Wilder? So why are you going to take a 30 second clip from an interview and tell them that's everything I said about the flight? Well, you, you, I mean, you essentially asked for the $50 million. It's, it's, it's a quote, it's a reference. If it is a $100, if it is a $100 million fight, give it to me. I will sign the fight. I didn't see no $50 million. My bank account is still the same. It ain't changed. So, so I'm looking for that money. But you said if they give you $50 million, you will sign tomorrow. But where is it? 
I mean, so you didn't see the proof of funds? No, bro. Yeah, I'm saying he was emailing no, he, 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 Yeah, I'll speak to him. So, 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 to so him. you don't believe that it was true? But I, all I'm saying is I just didn't see the 50 million. That's what he asked me, and that's what I said. Later, there were some sources that would emerge and say the reason Deontay Wilder's team wouldn't provide proof of funds is that Frank Warren was one of the members involved in the offer and that some of the terms of that offer would require Anthony Joshua to fight on BT Sports. So Anthony Joshua would give up his rights to the fight. Deontay Wilder's team would inherit the rights to the fight. And of course, uh, PBC and Al Heyman, Showtime, would show the fight in America. But BT Sports would inherit the right to the fight in the UK based on the $50 million because Joshua accepts the $50 million. He gives up his rights to the fight. And of course, because of the investment from Frank Warren and BT Sports, they would inherit the rights to the fight and they would show the fight in the UK. But that would do Anthony Joshua no good because he's with Sky Sports and he gets a percentage of the pay-per-view. But he would be giving that up for a $50 million flat fee. And so there goes the weasel. There goes the weasel. And I'm not calling Frank Warren a weasel. He's shrewd. That's magnificent. That's brilliant. That's how you insert yourself in the biggest fight in boxing history. Or should I say the fight that was going to be the biggest fight in boxing history at that time. But Frank Warren found another way to outsmart Deontay Wilder. See, he found a way to outsmart Deontay Wilder before. But he found uh, another way to outsmart Deontay Wilder. And Frank Warren... Don't sleep on that man, but the sources say Frank Warren was a part of the negotiation, and if Anthony Joshua would have agreed to that $50 million, he would have had to give up his rights to the fights, and Showtime, PBC would show the fight in America, and BT Sports would show the fight in the UK, and that's the reason why they would never provide proof of funds. So there's so much sketchy, shady stuff surrounding that 50 million dollar deal and people said anthony joshua was a punk a ducker and he didn't really want to make the fight all because he wanted to know where his money was going to come from and he wanted to know the terms of the fight so if that makes anthony joshua a ducker then of course feast your eyes on this a 100 million dollar offer from the zone to deontay wilder Yes, the zone offered Deontay Wilder twice as much as he offered Anthony Joshua and way more than he was worth and than he's ever made in his entire life. And let's see how that turned out. This is from the Los Angeles Times written by Lance Pugmire on March 20th, 2019, in which he wrote, an offer of $100 million or more would make any mere mortal leap to say yes. But upon reflection with his managers, Deontay Wilder focused on one main sticking point when presented with the opportunity to lock in two fights with his fellow unbeaten heavyweight world champion, Anthony Joshua of England. We asked, how much is Joshua getting? And we were never told the answer, manager Shelley Finkel said. What they offered sounded good, but it might not sound so good if the other guy is getting double or triple it. And we never knew what that number was. Now let's take a quick rewind to when Joshua wanted to see the funds for the $50 million. And he wanted to see where the money was coming from. It was, why would we meet if you're not going to accept the terms? They're saying this offer sounds good. It's certainly more money than Deontay Wilder's ever made in his career. For three fights, two with Anthony Joshua. And once again, we've already shown how Joshua opponents already get paid more than their value. They get paid way more than they ever make when they fight someone else. Deontay Wilder went from making $2.1 million to fight Luis Ortiz in a fight he almost lost. Got extra time in the seventh. To being offered a contract. For 120 million. And what did he do? He turned it down because they wanted to know how much money Anthony Joshua was making. 
They wanted to know how much money Anthony Joshua was making. But it was wrong for Joshua to want to see an actual contract. To want to see the terms in writing. Not only did they make Deontay Wilder a formal contract offer, the people who had the authority to enter into a binding contract with Deontay Wilder sat down and met with him, told him the conditions of the contract, and gave him a contract that if he signed it, it would have been binding. And by Shelley's own admission, it sounded good, but it might not have been so good if they knew what Joshua was making. You knew Wilder was making more than he's ever made. You knew he was going to, he was going to, like, make 20 times his worth. And you still rejected the contract because you want to know how much Josh was making. And and Joshua may be making double or triple the amount of, of Deontay Wilder. He should. Wilder didn't do anything to earn 50-50 then. And, fa- and, f- and fast forward to 2020, he still hasn't done anything to earn 50-50 now. You know, they say hindsight's 2020, but that was a pretty good deal then. And it's still a pretty good deal now. But they rejected it. For the very same reasons that they were making fun of Joshua for and that they were criticizing Joshua for saying he never wanted to fight except this offer was an official offer. The terms and conditions were on the table. The money and how he was going to be paid was there. And he rejected it. And those same Deontay Wilder fans that gave grief to Anthony Joshua all of a sudden turned into businessmen. All of a sudden applauded a fight not taking place when there was a reasonable offer on the table. Deontay Wilder went from being offered $12.5 million, from being offered $15 million, to being offered $120 million. And Deontay Wilder rejected it. Reasons being, he didn't know how much Anthony Joshua was going to make, and he wanted to be loyal to his team, Showtime. And of course, his managers told him not to take it. That's a key point. Look at this. It says, would make any mere mortal leap to say yes. But upon reflection with his managers, Wilder focused on one main sticking point, which means his managers told him that was a bad deal. We know the magnitude of the fight, you know. You think like in one fight you can make a hundred million on the fight? You know, the, like I said, the heavyweight division is 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 so exciting now. The money is so huge in the sport right now. You know, the people. It's one thing to watch a fight and understand fighters and you know what they're capable of doing, but the whole business size is a whole another another side, which it takes. You know. That's why I appreciate Shelly and my team to try to explain to me certain things because sometimes it get complicated for me to even explain. They've been in it for over 30 years. I got guys here, Shelly and Al, been in it, combined together over 60 years. So why wouldn't they not know the route to go? You know, they know what it takes. They didn't had all the champions before to, to, and got them to the, what, they, what, what they have became, you know, whether they still got it. Right now or not, that's up to them. That's their business. But they know where how to take a fighter to the next level and to the top. And you got to trust in people that, that have the years and the experience over it more than anyone. Just one thing. Eight months ago, they offered $10 million. Then they offered 15 Then they offered 20 Now they came back with 40 Deontay's only getting bigger, so you can imagine what it's going to be when they do fight. Of course... Deontay Wilder rejected the offer and decided to stay with Showtime. And here's an article from ESPN on March 19, 2019, written by Dan Rayfield, in which he says, Heavyweight world title holder Deontay Wilder, pursued by various broadcasters and offered deals with as much as $120 million, has decided to remain with longtime broadcast partner Showtime at least for now. And he's going to fight his mandatory challenger, Dominique Brazil, on May 18th, in which everyone knows what happened with Dominique Brazil. He made easy work of Brazil, but this was when his salary had to become a secret. Now, if you believe they were going to make him making more money than Joshua's secret, you're out of your mind. The reason why it was a secret was because he wasn't making as much money. He wasn't making as much money, and that's why they make it. That's why they try to make it a secret. 
And there were articles on ESPN that report he made it somewhere in between 10 to 14 million, which if he would have signed with the zone, he would have made 20 million for the fight with Dominique Brazil. But he took less money on the gamble that his managers sold him on. But perhaps the worst part is that he got rid of the man who actually got him the meeting with the zone. The man who got him the meeting that boosted his profile, that forced Shelly Finkel and Al Heyman to have to pay him more money. That's right. Deontay Wilder agreed to fire Lou DeBella for getting him a meeting that resulted in a $120 million offer. You think that's what he wanted to do? Do you think that's smart? Now, I'll tell you what I think. See, I believe... Al Heyman was upset. I believe Shelly Finkel was upset. You brought him to the enemy and the enemy made him an offer so big. We are now forced to have to overpay this man. And we had him eating out of our hands. We had him buying. We were selling him the dream. We were, And now we got to figure out a way to get this dude paid. Money he doesn't generate. Money he doesn't deserve. And perhaps maybe Eddie Hearn was the genius on his part to offer him that $120 million because he knew either way, either he was going to accept it and have to fight Joshua, or he was going to reject it, and then Al Heyman, Shelly Finkel, and Showtime were going to have to pay him way more than he was worth. So this is, this is a deep game. It's a dirty game. And maybe Eddie Hearn was the genius on that one because... What it ended up leading to was them having to take a risk to get De- to get Deontay Wilder the reward. Say, Wilder, you want more money, you're going to have to take on tougher fights. Insert Tyson Fury. But yes, Deontay Wilder rejected $120 million. Are you still working with Deontay? I've answered that question a gazillion times before. I know. I, everyone knows I'm not working with Deontay, and I haven't been shy about it. Uh, my relationship professionally as a, a promoter for Deontay and working with his team ended when I set up the DAZN meeting, which is also perverse. What did I do? I tried to talk to everyone in the marketplace and make a best effort to make the most money for a guy that I cared about and I worked with. Isn't that what I'm supposed to do? And, but you know what? I mean, he, I had a decent run with Deontay. I have nothing bad to say about him. I wish him and his family well. If I see him, I'll, I'll say hi. I don't think he has a bad word to say about me, and, and we'll keep it that way. From what I've read... Um, there was a meeting arranged between Wilder's team and the Zone um, back in January, December or January, and in that meeting it was discussed about him signing for the Zone. No, the, the, the meeting was actually um, a year ago. Oh wow! Okay. And and and, and you know neither, neither neither Deontay or myself spoke much really about anything. I, I only came out and spoke about anything in the last few months, and it was because. People ask me direct questions. Um, but no, the meeting was over a year ago, and Deontay knew I was setting up the meeting. He was aware of it. And we had spoken about it, and, um, and I thought it was the right thing to do. And with all due respect, as a promoter, whether or not, um, you know, he had, whether or not he had incredibly strong management, and without Heyman and, and, and uh, Shelly Finkel, he, he did. Um, but I still felt that the right thing for me would be was to pursue every avenue out there. And um, things had come to a uh, roadblock with Eddie Hearn. I mean, Shelley was running discussions with Eddie Hearn, and they, uh, they came to a roadblock. But it occurred to me that it didn't make any sense to me why there weren't direct discussions with the zone. Um, and I set up the meeting, and, and, uh, and I thought I did the right thing. I would have done the same thing again. But um, literally, by the time I left the room, I was pretty much out of the Deontay Wilder business. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised with respect to Deontay and my, my, my relationship. I was a little bit surprised about how it went down, but I wasn't surprised that Shelly and Al didn't want me involved because um, I think they wanted total control over the situation. And, and, uh, and you know, Deontay was a PBC fighter and I was meeting with the zone. One of the reasons Deontay Wilder rejected the deal from the zone was. He wanted to be loyal to his team. He wanted to be loyal to a manager. He wanted to be loyal to an advisor. And he wanted to be loyal to Showtime. However, Showtime didn't feel that same loyalty. Steven Espinoza 
said he wasn't going to pick up the Wilderverse Ortiz pay-per-view. When asked why, he said that he wasn't in the business of taking disproportionate risk. And so it was obvious to him that he wasn't going to pick up the Deontay Wilder fight. Now here's something I need you to understand. They were willing to pay Anthony Joshua $50 million, but they weren't willing to pick up Wilder vs. Ortiz. Did they ever want to be in the Wilder business, or did they just want to be in the Joshua business? And they were using Deontay Wilder. Because once the possibility of fighting Joshua was gone, Showtime was gone. And Showtime was not interested in Wilder vs. Ortiz, and they, they barely seem interested in Wilder vs. Brazil because that wasn't a pay-per-view fight. That was just on regular Showtime. And the numbers for that fight wasn't good. They didn't even break a million views on free, regular. Or I shouldn't say free, but on regular cable. So you have to ask yourself a lot of questions and a lot of gambles and a lot of risks that Deontay Wilder took. But ever since the draw, those risks have been paying off for Tyson Fury. The moment Deontay Wilder had a draw with Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury gained popularity for the fact that he rose from the deck like The Undertaker, given the fact that he was just 400 pounds and battling depression, drug addiction, and alcohol abuse. And he returned to the ring and put on such a magnificent performance against the so-called hardest puncher in boxing history. It inspired ESPN to enter into a deal worth over $80 million with Tyson Fury. It inspired the WWE to have Tyson Fury appear on their show, making him more popular. Even now, the UFC is going to have Tyson Fury appear in UFC 4. Tyson Fury has surpassed Deontay Wilder in popularity in his own country. All that from the moment they had a draw. All the risks Deontay Wilder took in an attempt to gain 50-50 in a fight with Anthony Joshua has finally paid off. The only problem is it's paid off for another man. And that man is Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. Now it's reported that Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua can both make over $100 million for their first fight for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Isn't that what Deontay Wilder wanted? You saw in the clip. You saw in the clip of the video Deontay Wilder saying, yeah, you know, the business and Shelly Finkels and, and, and you know, uh, to Al Heyman, they, they've been in the business side. You, you heard him speaking. It sounded nothing like that tweet, right, that said, oh, I sent you an offer. Check your email. Him speaking sounded nothing like that tweet, At least not, not the way the tweet was written. And all of that rejecting. 10 million according to Shelly Finkel, but what we do know is rejecting 12.5 million, rejecting 15 million, rejecting 120 million, to now Tyson Fury agreeing to fight Anthony Joshua if they get past fights that include Deontay Wilder in this. I know I brought you all the way around the world to drop you off here. Tyson Fury and Frank Warren have been outsmarting Deontay Wilder, Shelly Finkel, and Al Heyman from the jump. Let's start from the beginning. Frank Warren was in on the $50 million offer to Anthony Joshua. Frank Warren has no ties to Joshua, but if Joshua would have agreed to that $50 million, BT Sports and Frank Warren would have had the rights to show the fight in the UK. Meaning Frank Warren was going to get paid, although... Anthony Josh was not his fighter, which would have left Sky Sports and Eddie Hearn in a pickle. But for Frank Warren, that was going to be great business. Frank Warren didn't sign Fury and later on allowed him to fight Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder was offered $120 million by the zone, and he rejected that offer. Because he wanted a 50-50 split with Joshua. In rejecting the offer, he wanted to know how much Joshua was going to make. And Joshua may be making double or triple the amount he was going to make. And you heard Deontay Wilder 
he could make a hundred million dollars in one fight with uh anthony joshua so why would he agree to the offer that was given to him by the zone shelly finkel and al Heyman try to pick or cherry pick the lineal heavyweight title that's right they call on tyson fury after he's been out for two and a half years had to lose over 150 pounds battling depression drug addiction and alcohol abuse he had two tune-up fights and fought Deontay Wilder he had three fights in six months and they still had to rob Tyson Fury by giving him a draw after he really beat Deontay Wilder after beating Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury signed an 80 million dollar deal with ESPN and he did the WWE which in return, made him a bigger star than Deontay Wilder in the United States of America. Another key element to all this was Tyson Fury made Deontay Wilder believe they were keeping Anthony Joshua out of the sandbox. Remember, we're going to freeze him out. We're going to keep him out of the sandbox. That's what Tyson Fury was saying. And Deontay Wilder, Mr. Loyalty, Mr. Loyal to Showtime, and then they drop him. Mr. Loyal to Al Heyman and Shelly Finko. Oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep Anthony Joshua out of the sandbox. Okay. Fury stops Wilder and wins the WBC title. And after he did that, what did he do? What's the big announcement? Tyson Fury agrees to fight Anthony Joshua in 2021. But here's the kicker. He agrees to fight him while he still has a third fight pending with Deontay Wilder. Now, why would he do that? Well, one, he's extremely confident he's going to beat Deontay Wilder. And why wouldn't he be? He's won the majority of the rounds. They've been in the ring. The first fight, like I said, he was coming off of a two and a half year layoff. He had to lose over 150 pounds. He had three fights in six months. In the rematch, he completely dominated Deontay Wilder. Posted a picture of him standing over Deontay Wilder like Ali standing over Liston in that iconic picture. This isn't bulletin board material. This is psychological warfare. This is a cutthroat message being sent to Wilder. Not only did I take your title, but I took your dream. You rejected a $120 million deal from the zone so you can try to get 50 50 with Anthony Joshua. You took the risk of fighting me. You tried to cherry pick me to get 50 50 with Joshua. You thought I was an easy touch. They robbed me and gave me a draw after I beat you. Forcing me to have to fight you in the rematch and I sparked you out in the rematch. I made your corner throw in the towel after you caught me pillow fist. And you believed we were uh, freezing Anthony Joshua out. You made so many dumb deals in the name of loyalty. And as soon as I beat you and I took that WBC strap for you. Took it from you. I agreed to fight Anthony Joshua in a heartbeat. It was so easy for Joshua and Fury to make the fight. Because Fury earned 50-50 on the back of Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder elevated Tyson Fury to 50-50 status with Anthony Joshua. All the trash Wilder was talking one face one champ, one name, speak it, believe it, receive it, all the nonsense this guy was talking, hardest punch in boxing history, all the accolades, all that stuff, just elevated Tyson Fury into the position where he could negotiate 50-50 with Anthony Joshua. The deal was done easy. The biggest fight in boxing history no longer includes Deontay Wilder because of ego, poor management, and a lack of respect for someone like Lou DeBella who got him an offer for $120 million. So why is Tyson Fury announcing this fight right now? 
He's reminding Deontay Wilder that you risked it all. You risked it all for this. And I got it now. On the strength of you. And if I beat you in the third fight, not only are you going to be completely irrelevant in the biggest fight in boxing history, in recent memory, in the heavyweight division, you're also going to be a cautionary tale. And it's like, wow, when you really think about this, if Deontay Wilder doesn't win the trilogy, Tyson Fury would have completely ruined that man. He already can't show his face. He's already not doing interviews. He's already not coming outside. Can you imagine with what Tyson Fury's doing? This is psychological warfare. This is sending a message. This is breaking someone down and waste. The man Tyson Fury is a genius and you got to give him credit for it. This is deep. There's no way this is bulletin board material. This is reminding Deontay Wilder of the desperate situation that he is in. And it's not just Wilder, it's his fans. All the fanboys who thought his right hand was always going to bail him out. All his fanboys who thought it was smart business to turn down $120 million, although it was way more than he's ever made in his entire career. Tyson Fury is reminding him that he's hanging on by a thread. But the sad part for Wilder is Tyson Fury is so confident. He's so confident. And I don't believe Wilder is. I don't believe he was confident going into the rematch. And I believe he's even less confident now. And hey, I could be wrong. But I will say this. Deontay Wilder better get his act together. Because if he doesn't, there'll be one champ, one face, one name. And that fight won't even include Deontay Wilder.